Forget an intro. The story we're leading off with is the AB Snapchat screenshots of a conversation he had with Big Ben, presumably back in the Killer B era. It reads, from AB, Nothing can stop you, brother. It only gets better. We got to all play better. Me, the line, other wideouts, team, efforts, everyone. Got to keep you clean first and foremost, man. You made tackles, runs. You need to be fresh, not touch. Fresh, not doing all that. Then from Big Ben, I'm getting a kick out of everyone thinking there's something going on with us. We always said when you're the best, people want to knock you down. I can't wait till we show them all and shut them all up. We are the greatest of all time, and I really believe that. I need to be better, and I will be, I promise. I'm not sure why my game isn't at the top right now. I think my elbow is hurting me a lot, but I'm going to push through it. Yee yee, we the best. Interesting when you consider AB posted a screenshot of another conversation that he had with another Hall of Fame quarterback that he played with. And that screenshot and that conversation wasn't as flattering. I'm not saying TB12 did anything wrong in his message to AB. I'm not going to read it because it is pretty long and I'm assuming you guys have already checked it out. But TB12 is actually in the right. He's just looking out for AB, making sure AB can start going down a better path and getting around some better people. But isn't it obvious who AB has more respect for at this point as he reflects on his NFL career? But... Should it actually even be a surprise? Because don't forget back in the spring when A.B. was on a podcast and asked about which quarterback he would take. I love them all. But who was your favorite that you felt you had the most chemistry with? Bro, you already know who's the most chemistry with. You're looking at the numbers. The numbers um, tell the story. Does Tom Brady throw me the ball like Ben Roethlisberger? Let's be honest. Let me ask you. I'm asking you guys. Tom, of course, Tom. Tom throw me more than Ben? I don't know what's going on through A.B.'s mind right now. Is he... Regretting decisions he made here in Pittsburgh. He knows he had it so good here, but messed it up. Does he wish he had a time machine? I don't know. But moral of the story is you have one of the greatest receivers of all time who played with both Tom Brady and Big Ben, and he'd take Big Ben over Tom Brady. That's some goddamn wisdom from AB right there. And then we got some other final takeaways from the screenshotted text. Big Ben referencing his elbow hurting. This is something we had no clue about at the time. Big Ben did hint at it after he had the 2019 elbow surgery that his elbow was nagging him before the surgery. We just didn't know what the time frame was, what the extent of it was, but it looks like dude's in pain. But of course, we know who Seven is. He's a warrior. He's going to tough it out. And he still was lighting up the best defenses in the league like it was nothing putting up elite numbers. But then you also had the text where he said, we are the greatest of all time. I really believe that. Hurts, bro. Hurts to hear. I'm not saying he's wrong. I actually agree with that 100%. I'm taking 7 and 84 over Montana Rice, Aikman Irvin, whatever other QB receiver duo you want to throw out there. I'm taking Big Ben and AB. It just sucks to know there was more left out on the table. Next on the docket, though, is Minka Fitzpatrick's recovery time is 39 superhuman. Apparently, after his appendectomy, he wanted to play in the Saints game. Don't dudes usually have to sit out of their office jobs for like a few days to maybe a week? Meanwhile, Minka, the day after having the surgery, wants to play professional football. Insane. And as a reference, when Big Ben had his emergency appendectomy back in 06, he was out for like two weeks. Probably should have stayed out longer because that was around the same time he had the motorcycle crash, and he wasn't right throughout that season. Joe Burrow, he had the surgery this offseason. He was out for a couple weeks as well. He had some complications, though. So contrast that to Minka, who literally tried to play, or wanted to play, I don't know if it was actually taken seriously, the day after the surgery. But you know what is being taken seriously? I thought he was going to be out for like two to three weeks, maybe a month. It's looking like he might actually play against the Bengals, which would be a week removed from the surgery. I don't know what to think of it. I'm no expert at anything. All I got to say is Godspeed to Minka and hope everything's good. And then lastly, for this edition of Big Deep News, we got some miscellaneous topics that I'll go over briefly. Steelers outside linebacker Alex Highsmith was named Defensive Player of the Week. Congratulations. This is due to his two sack, one of them being a strip sack performance against the Saints. Right now, Highsmith is tied for fourth in the NFL in sacks. And if TJ Watt ain't going to the Pro Bowl this year, I guess it's not even the Pro Bowl. It's called the Pro Bowl Games, right? If TJ Watt can't go, a Steeler edge rusher got to go somehow. And based off the production this season, Highsmith fits the bill. 
And speaking of the Pro Bowl games, the voting is officially open. Don't forget to vote. Do your duty as a Steeler fan. Don't be like the fake fans. We also have a uniform announcement. The Steelers will be wearing their Color Rush jerseys this upcoming Sunday, which is in contrast to the Bengals, who will be wearing their whiteout jerseys and helmets. Wouldn't that jersey matchup be a sight to see on national TV? Sunday Night Football? Oh, wait. Steelers aren't playing on Sunday Night Football. It's a 4 o'clock game. Sunday Night Football, NFL, and NBC, they chose the Chiefs, who are a team that's 7-2. and two. They're already a good team. Boring. We've seen that story before. They chose that against the Chargers, a team that's just so banged up and I don't think are as good of a team as we thought. They chose that over Steelers-Bengals fighting for the AFC North Division. I digress. And then I was going to talk about Mitch Trubisky potentially playing tight end for the Steelers in a Taysom Hill role because a reporter asked Tom on that yesterday, but I don't think it's worth the time. So we're just going to pass. Simple answer is no, we're not doing that. Uh, but that's it for this edition of Big Deep News. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think of some of the topics that I discussed down in the comments. Stay chilling. Enjoy your Wednesday. Peace.